Here's your auto news update for January 10th. And our first story today is we have some of the best-selling cars of 2023. Um, and it's kind of as you expect, kind of the top three are the F-150, the Silverado, and the Ram 1500. Um, but one surprise I thought was number five is actually the Tesla Model Y, which is kind of the first time we've seen an electric vehicle kind of pop into the top five best-selling vehicles. Yeah, I wouldn't have expected to see the, the Y in there. Um, I would have thought that, you know, maybe the Model 3 or something, but, you know, it's interesting the Y. Also, you know, obviously the, the trucks are killing it. The domestic trucks are always super dominant, but it's funny to see like more than half the list seems like it's Japanese models as well. So I think that's something to be said for as well. Yeah, there's still, still a lot of crossovers, SUVs. Yeah, like the RAV4 is number four. The uh, I think CRV is number six. So yeah, a lot of... A lot of SUVs up there as well. And Volkswagen has unveiled the prototype for the 2025 Volkswagen Golf GTI. Um, it's going to have some more tech and a larger screen. Um, but unfortunately, they are getting rid of the manual transmission, um, which is the first time it won't ever be offered with one in the United States. Yeah, it's another another one on the, the loss board for the manual trans. It seems like maybe even just a year or two, we we'll, we won't have any options. Yeah, I think I think we're down to just a handful of models nowadays. And for 2024, Polestar is updating their Polestar 2 model um, by switching it from front-wheel drive to rear-wheel drive for the standard model, um, with all-wheel drive still being an option. Yeah, I would imagine that's a growing trend uh, for you know balance and and weight. You know, I'm su- kind of surprised it's kind of just starting to do this now. Yeah, we've seen a few other models kind of make that transition back to rear-wheel drive. Um, like the Ford Explorer and the Mazda CX-90, um, you know, where for years they were kind of switched to this cheaper front wheel drive architecture, but seems like, yeah, people want the better dynamics, the better packaging um, that you kind of get, especially with electric vehicles with a rear wheel drive. The only problem I could see is, you know, like icy conditions or, or snowy conditions, but that's maybe not the kind of vehicle you would see in those areas anyway. Yeah, and they have an all wheel drive option anyways, if you if you do need that. Um, so yeah i think this is more for kind of probably their california customers where you know snow is not usually something they're coming across and tesla continues to be the electric vehicle sales leader for 2023 with 1.8 million units sold globally last year uh but the chinese automaker byd is coming in close they're around 1.6 million as of last year and they they may end up passing up tesla this year yeah, I mean, Tesla, I mean, maybe wasn't necessarily the first to market, but they were kind of the first most successful um, electric field to make a market. And, you know, obviously the competition is still graining ground, but I still think that they're kind of the standard that everybody compares their vehicle with. So, you know, if you were looking at something else, you know, you're going to be looking at how that compares to a Tesla opposed to any other you know, model, I would think, more often than not. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's probably going to be the case for the foreseeable future too is even like some somewhat successful brands like Rivian you know they're they've seen a, a you know a big increase in their production but they're still only maybe 60,000 units a year uh yes yeah. and they're definitely still seen coming and go and, and Tesla still seems to be plugging away no pun intended yeah. and Mazda has said that they'll be announcing their next SUV the CX-70 at the end of the month um it'll be a two-row luxury SUV kind of based off of the CX-60 that they sell overseas, but a little bit wider for the American market. Yeah, this should do pretty well if they get the size and the, the obviously the price right. Um, I really do love an inline six engine too, so that's kind of cool. Yeah, it's nice that they're going to carry over the engines, looks like from the, the CX-90. So yeah, I'll have some decent power and have that plug-in hybrid option as well. And the $7,500 federal EV tax credit uh, vehicles that are eligible has shrunk from 14 down to just four due to uh, some new rules coming into effect at, on January 1st. Uh, so now the current vehicles that are eligible are the F-150 Lightning, Tesla Model 3, Model X, and Model Y. Yeah, I did see that some of those companies are, are doing some scrambling to figure out what they need to do to make those vehicles um, re-eligible for that tax credit. Um, yeah. But that is a huge incentive. I think that is going to be, it's going to make it difficult for people to pull the trigger on one of those vehicles if it doesn't have that. Yeah, and I, I know, like you were saying, I think that's, I saw Nissan and Hyundai and uh, especially Chevrolet, they're trying to really get uh, things together so they can get on that eligibility list again. Because yeah, I think that will make make a big difference. 
Why gamble with your website? Are you going to be at NADA 2024? We will. We'll be in booth number 7529N in the North Hall in Las Vegas from February 1st through February 4th. So come on down and see us if you have any kind of questions and want to learn more about Giselle. And of course, like, follow, and subscribe for more content coming soon.